At the time of the moon landing in 1969, many people envisioned that by the beginning of the 21st century, space travel would become routine and we would be visiting other planets in our solar system and perhaps even daring to venture into interstellar space. That future didn't arrive as planned. In fact, humans haven't made it any deeper into space than when we landed the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s, though we have operated a manned orbital outpost, the International Space Station, which has been continuously occupied for more than two decades. NASA currently is planning to resume human missions to the moon in the mid to late 2020s as a prelude to astronauts eventually traveling to Mars. Many planets within the solar system have been considered for colonization and terraforming. The main candidates for colonization in the inner solar system are Mars and Venus. But those who've long dreamed of humans becoming a truly spacefaring race argue that exploring space provides down-to-earth benefits in areas such as health, mining, and security. And more inspirational benefits, too. Here are some of the reasons why we should colonize the solar system. Oddly, solar system colonization has been suggested both as the means to better conduct nuclear war and the means to better survive it. A nation in sole possession of a lunar missile base could be confident their base would see enemy missiles launched from Earth long before they arrived, giving the base time to launch its weapons before its inevitable destruction. As well, a missile from the moon would take long enough to reach the Earth that such missiles would only be useful as a second strike weapon. If for some reasons a major nuclear war breaks out on Earth and destroys all the nature, humanity would have some chance to survive on other planets and leave Earth if we colonize the solar system early on. Human populations expanded greatly in the 20th century, fueling concerns that a Malthusian crisis loomed. One proposal for dealing with the crisis was exporting the surplus population to space habitats. It was argued that even if the habitats didn't bleed off enough of the surplus, at least the habitats had a good chance of surviving the coming crash. This argument failed to convince for many reasons, not least of which is that if one assumes exponential population growth cannot be checked, all space colonization could do is buy a little time before every bit of mass in the solar system was either human flesh or the means to support it. Even interstellar programs only defer doom rather than preventing it. At the same time, if there were means to prevent Malthusian doom in space, the same methods could be used on Earth more cheaply and more conveniently. As the dinosaurs discovered, having an Everest-sized object hit the Earth at tens of kilometers per second is a global catastrophe. Smaller impacts compensate for lack of severity by increased frequency. Surely, avoiding asteroid doom demands a vast space-based network of observers slash asteroid tractors and the usual off-planet backup in case they miss one. Once again, human ingenuity is the enemy. Earth-based astronomers have done sterling work over the last four decades documenting the smaller bodies of the solar system. The population of potential impactors is far better characterized than it was when scientists realized the significance of Chicxulub Crater. Humanity's energy crisis is one of the reasons why the colonization of solar system matters. As astonishing as this revelation may sound, there was a time known as the energy crisis, when for various geopolitical reasons gas prices soared and caused all manner of undesirable economic side effects. Given that oil reserves are finite, the future could well feature a larger and permanent repeat. Space-based solar power stations exploiting 24 7 access to sunlight could offer a way to avoid future energy crises. Solar power is enjoying enormous growth right now but the usual everything is much more expensive in space has limited it to the surface of Earth. At least thus far, the only way to solve energy crisis is to look beyond the Earth and invest in space exploration and colonization. Much of the sun's light does not reach Earth and is diluted when it enters the atmosphere. That's why solar panels are much more effective in space and can deliver us twice the energy than they can deliver on Earth.
The laws of thermodynamics mean that every joule used in our economy becomes heat. There is a limit to how much heat you can directly dump into a planetary atmosphere before extremely bad things happen. Not just mild stuff like the increasingly violent weather, sea level rise, and mass extinctions we see from garden variety greenhouse gas pollution. But undesirable events like the oceans literally boiling, the crustal carbonates being baked out, and the resulting runaway greenhouse effect raising the planetary temperature to the melting point of tin. The lifeless, uninhabited planets tend to have underperforming GDPs. Happily, for humanity, we won't get to total planetary collapse through direct heat radiation unless we raise the planetary heat level to something three orders of magnitude greater than current levels. Earth's resources are finite. With the ever-increasing human population and the need for energy, we need to look beyond. Our solar system has all the precious resources on planets and their moons that we need to sustain mankind for millions of years. For example, colonizing the moon would help us to harvest helium-3 that is found in enormous amount on the moon for energy that can be supplied to humans on Earth. Saturn's moon Titan has 300 times more liquid fuel than the total known oil reserves on Earth, and Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, has 30 times more water than the total amount of water on Earth. Because space colonization requires extremely advanced technology, it forces scientists to find new methods to reach the distant planets and the moons. When this happens, those technologies are even beneficial for us on Earth. Many common everyday services for terrestrial use, such as weather forecasting, remote sensing, satellite navigation systems, satellite television, and some long-distance communication systems critically rely on space infrastructure. One of the advantages of space colonization would be the discovery of new scientific possibilities. We could build huge telescopes. The bigger a telescope is, the more light it can catch, and the better the sharpness of the image will be. We definitely require more data regarding the planets and moons to check out what resides on those planets. Recently, James Webb Telescope is the greatest feat in space technology, which is sending us precious data from the solar system and beyond. Check out our video on James Webb Telescope to learn more about it. With the colonization of solar system, humanity would have greater freedom and protection from all sorts of threats. We could have unlimited energy and it would also help humanity tackle the divisions in humanity that arise because of ideas, religions, or energy. Most wars in history took place because of resources and land. Our solar system has enough resources to relish the hunger of all mankind for centuries. We could even build Dyson Sphere, which completely encompasses a star, to harness all the energy coming from the star. Although such technology is immensely difficult to create, but it's theoretically possible. Mankind is currently divided. If there was a sense of humanity in most people, we would see just a single nation on Earth, and there would not be any wars. However, that is of course just a fantasy, but once humanity realizes that they are just alone in this universe, then they would work hard to stay together and colonize the solar system together. Colonization of solar system would develop a sense of harmony and unity among humanity. That's all the time we have for today's video. Like this video if you found it helpful and don't forget to press the bell icon so you won't miss any updates.